Three things are true right now. I got a new haircut, it's easier than ever to edit portraits in Lyrum Classic, and it's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and each and every Tuesday we bring you a brand new, fresh, much like my haircut, depending on your point of view about that, fresh photography tutorial. This week, of course, is no different. We are diving into the world of photo editing. We're taking a look at Lightroom Classic, and we are taking a look at editing portraits. But specifically, we're going to look at just how easy it is to do that now within Lyrum Classic. There have been so many advancements in things like masking, in the various tools that are at your disposal when it comes to doing this kind of thing. And what better time than now to take a look at all of them together as a whole. I've been shooting on this. This is the new Sigma 50mm f1.2 lens. A great lens, I'm sure you'd agree, for portraiture. So I've got a nice portrait of me we're gonna take a look at and we are going to edit it together. Let's dive in. So this is the portrait of me that we are going to be working with and we're going to use all the different tools available to us within Lightroom Classic. This was just lit with natural window light. So off to the right of this photo. So you can see it works as a little bit of a catch light in my eyes. We've got some sort of semi-dramatic lighting with regards to one side of me is more lit than the other side. Yes, I'm wearing the same shirt right now. I took this photo a mere probably 40 minutes ago. And now we're going to edit it together. Let's dive in straight away. So first up, I've obviously deliberately chosen here to have a darker background. So I've shot this against walls in my house that are much darker in the way that they're painted. Uh, that's deliberate so that I would be the brightest part of the image. So it's a little bit more of a moody kind of photo. I wanted to go for that look. But what we're going to do to begin with is actually come up here to the masking tool. We're not even going to do any global edits to begin with. We're going to go straight in with a radial gradient. I'm going to put that right over my head here and kind of extend it down a little bit, down so it's getting all of my skin. And what we're going to do is just bring the exposure up a tad. Not loads, and we might even want to just bring it over to the right here so it's mostly getting this side of my face. But all good. Immediately, that's the first thing that I want to do. I don't actually think we need to do much in terms of global edits. And what I mean by that is affecting the entire photo as a whole, because I think pretty much most of it is correct in camera, which is great news. I did want to keep it reasonably dark in the exposure when I was taking the photo so that the background would be nice and dark. I think we've done a good job there. I think we can continue to go ahead and edit this using mostly masks. Now, what's great about that is Lightroom makes that very, very easy. And before we even go any further, we're going to come up to the masking panel here. We're going to go create new mask and we're going to select people. Now, there's a few different things I could do. I could do select subject. I could use a brush tool, but I'm going to go select people. Lightroom's going to mask me out. There we go. If there were more than just me in there, there would be other people to select from. But I'm going to click person one, which of course is me. And then I've got lots of different options for how I might want to mask this. Now, in the past, you'd have to do this with the brush or with different radial gradients or something like that. Whereas now it's so much easier. This is essentially using AI to just actually work out which parts of the subject are what. And then we can mask them out really easily. So first up, facial skin. Yes, I'm going to want to do a mask for facial skin. I'm going to do a mask for iris and pupil. Absolutely. I think for now, that's probably it. And down here, I've got a little tick box that says create two separate masks. We're going to leave that ticked because I do want two separate masks for that. So now we've got mask two, which is facial skin. And what I would do here, and depending on the subject, you know, you might want to do this a little bit differently, is come down to where we've got clarity, texture, dehaze. Now we took a look at this in more detail a few weeks back, but I'm actually going to bring the clarity down. Not too much, but just a little bit. I want to soften the skin on the face a little bit. The texture down a little bit as well. Now we're not going too mad with this because I think it depends on the subject, right? I think if it was a much more feminine subject, then I might do it a little bit more, smooth that skin out because I think it suits a feminine subject more. I think for me, I probably need to lean in a little bit more to that grungy look because of just the way that I look. I think that's fine. I think it's totally fine to to lean in different ways, but I've softened the skin a touch there and I certainly don't wanna to go too far with it. It really is very subtle. Okay, we could probably go, do you know what? A little bit further with it. Let's maybe come back down to it and uh, and just bring that down a touch more. Not too much, but just, just a little bit. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And we can always see a 
complete before and after by just pressing the backslash key on the keyboard. So let's press that now. This is where we started. This is where we've got to. So you can see just a very subtle difference. Right, okay, let's go back into the masking panel. Let's go back to the iris and pupil here. Now, what I'm gonna do here is just bring that exposure up a little bit. I want those to pop just a little bit more. I am gonna bring the clarity up as well, which is probably gonna darken them down just a touch more as well as we sort of essentially add a little bit of contrast there with the clarity. So sort of micro contrast in the midtones, which is gonna work quite well. And I'm actually gonna bring the saturation up as well. I want to really make them pop and maybe even just add some cool tones there so that they are really accentuated. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and do another mask. So we're gonna create new mask. We're gonna go linear gradient. I'm gonna bring this in from the right. Now this is to simulate the sunlight. I'm gonna drag this over. We want a fairly sort of feathered gradient here. We want that to be nice and yeah, there we go. There we go. And I'm gonna come up here to the mask form. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna go intersect mask with select subjects. I'm gonna apply that linear gradient that I've just drawn, but only where it intersects with me. And now if I move this, you can see the gradient of this actual mask, but it's only applying it to me, which is really useful because what I wanna do is actually bring the exposure up a touch. I'm gonna to bring the dehaze down a touch. I wanna to simulate a little bit of light actually landing onto me there. But I think that looks that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. The next thing we're gonna do actually is come up to healing. Now this is another area where this is much easier now in Lightroom than it used to be. You don't actually have to go in and use Photoshop. You can use just Lightroom Classic. We've got this content aware remove. And what we're gonna do is use the mouse scroll wheel to just make this nice and small. I'm gonna hold space bar and zoom in. I wanna get rid of a couple of small blemishes. So there's one on my nose there. Not entirely sure what that is, if I'm totally honest with you. And I'm gonna come down to where I've got a little spot just down here. Now, I don't personally feel the need to do that particularly, but I think it's an interesting part and a useful part of actually looking at what we can do in Lyrum. And I think for something like a little spot, you know, on the day of the shoot, I had the spot. I mean, that was today. It's right now. I think that's fine to go in and just get rid of that because of course, you know, you won't have that spot forever. I don't really like to go in these days and change too much about anyone just because I think that's who you are, right? So it's important, but the option is there and Lightroom Classic is very easy to work with that. Like I say, don't have to go into Photoshop. So we've just healed that up. I think that looks pretty good. I'm actually gonna come in to the masking panel again and go create new mask. I'm gonna go brush. This time I'm gonna bring the exposure down a little bit. And what I wanna do here is just paint on. I think we'll, we'll bring the flow down to about 40. That's gonna bring down how much we're applying this brush here. So we can build it up by continually brushing over the same point of the photo. But I want to, uh, I wanna add a little bit of shadow. I wanna accentuate this a little bit. Bit of drama into the photo. What does that look like? Let's see before and after, before and after, right? So it's, it's again, it's relatively subtle. And I guess, especially with portraits, I want to be reasonably subtle with what I'm doing because I don't want to go too far and find that, you know, it's just way too much. Everything's over edited. It's crazy. I can always build things up slowly. And then I want to be able to pull things back a little bit if I do go too far. So for example, this one, I'm actually gonna just reduce how much I've reduced that exposure. Let's look at an overall before and after. So this is where we started. This is where we've got to. So we've smoothed out that skin. We've affected the exposure. We've affected the eyes a little bit. I think it's, I think it's feeling pretty good. Next, I'm gonna come up here to this area here where it says click to show profile browser. And this is gonna give us some options for how we might wanna apply a certain look to our photos. And if you mouse over some of these, you've got lots of different options. I quite like this one, for example. I quite like this one as well. And we can apply these at a different opacity or a different amount. So I'm gonna go ahead with Modern 07. I think that looks pretty good. We can also look at some of these other ones. No, I think I like Modern 07, quite a high contrast. And I might come up here to this amount slider and just bring that down a touch. Not too much, actually. I quite like it being relatively full on. I'm gonna go ahead and click Close. Now, one more mask. Let's come up to Create New Mask. Let's go Select Background. This is gonna select everything behind me. There we go. And I'm just gonna bring that exposure down a touch. Not too much, but just a little bit. Now, I actually think that where we've got to here is probably about right. I'm pretty happy with this portrait. We've not gone too crazy with the edit. We got a lot of it right in camera, 
but we've done some meaningful things to the photo. There are other things we could do to stylize it a little bit. So for example, we could place some points on the tone curve like so and actually raise the black point if we wanted to have a more sort of filmic sort of look. We've got a sli those slightly faded blacks that can be quite a popular look. I think that looks quite nice, but to be honest with you, for the purposes of this photo, do you know what, actually, I do like that. Maybe I will keep it like that. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I do. You know what? We're going to keep it on. We're going to keep it on. Well, that's interesting. Didn't expect that during the tutorial. This is personal preference stuff, but I think that actually I like the look of this photo. But at this point, I think it is just about personal preference, how you want to stylize the photo and what you want it to really look like. I personally am very happy with how this photo has turned out now. Uh, I think it's a nice portrait. It's very easy to shoot just with natural light. And Lightroom makes it incredibly easy to edit a photo like this. You know, with the ability to mask different areas very quickly, very succinctly, it means that a portrait shoot, you know, if you're shooting a model or friends or anyone at all, really, it's just a lot easier to go through your photos, apply your edits and kind of get through them if you've got a lot of photos. Sometimes it's nice to sit, take your time. But sometimes you have a hundred photos to get through and it's really useful to actually be able to use a lot of these tools to speed up your workflow. Now, if you want to check out the new Sigma 50 millimeter F 1.2 art lens, there'll be a link down in the description to go and check that out on our website. There's also links down there for all the different equipment we use for these videos, everything that we really do here. There's all that stuff down there, the sort of go-to video kit. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well because there's new content all the time. I will see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.